days, you know, you thought about it, tried to schedule it, even found yourself daydreaming about it. Well, today it's yours. Put all the guilt aside. This is a working woman's holiday. I think it's safe to say, if you're a woman, you could use some rest. Our fast-paced society creates great expectations, but nothing like the pressure-packed plans we make for ourselves. We've got husbands, homes, careers, church, children, and the list just goes on and on. Women at work are trying to succeed while juggling jobs at home. The stay-at-home moms are trying to figure out who came up with this title so far removed from the truth. And retired women, you're so busy. When did you ever find time to work? We're all simply busy being busy. So, super women, super moms, it's time to slow down. And before you can even get a chance to feel guilty, please say hello to our guest, author Kim Thomas. Hi. 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 Good to see, see you. you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Share too. with us today how to slow down and rest as women, and perhaps maybe we'll take a little nap. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. Come back. Let's talk about slowing down and just breathing, breathing. Hmm. Thanks for staying with us. We're talking today with Kim Thomas, and uh, she's here to remind us of something we may have forgotten. It took God six days to create the world, but then even God rested. You know, that's really good, even God rested. Mm -hmm. I, I think, though, I have to ask the question, did he have to? Well, certainly our Heavenly Father, who is uh, able beyond our wildest imagination did not stretch his arms yawn and go who I need a nap <laughs> but because he knew us and he designed us so specifically he did model rest for us and I'm so grateful for that because I don't know about you but I'm not sure I've given myself permission that it's okay to rest mm -hmm. and uh, when we take a look in the scripture particularly like in the first book of the Bible it says that after six days um, God finished his work and then in the next chapter it says he um, he ceased from his labors and he rested and what I took from that, Deborah, was that um, we can cease from whatever we're doing and then feast on the goodness of the creation. And, and uh, for me, that gave um, just a little bit more definition to what does this mean to rest? Because beyond taking a nap, you know, it can seem sort of abstract and sort of elusive. Mm -hmm. What does it really mean to rest? And uh, that helps give, I think, a little bit of a, a, a structure from which to look yeah. at these subjects. For you, as an author, right. a painter, mm -hmm. a songwriter, a wife, you know, yeah. what, what made you finally see that I need to rest? Okay, this is enough. Isn't it sad? It usually comes down to, you know, crying. Doesn't it always yeah. come down to crying? Breaking I, down. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I were out one evening, and that year I had written a book. I had painted an art show. I had written and recorded a record. And in, in this one evening, we were out with three other couples, and the noise in the restaurant became kind of this background hum, and then the conversations and then the waiter coming, and suddenly that little buzzer that had been ringing in my soul for so long got louder and louder, and I excused myself and went to the only place that you can be alone in public, the ladies' restroom, and I <laughs> locked myself securely into the privacy of my own little stall, and as I sat there precariously perched, I put my head down, and I looked, and I began to see little um, sable brown, Maybelline-tinted <laughs> puddles collect in my hands, and I just wept. And in that moment, I think I finally, um, I heard that really generous offer from uh, the book of Matthew when Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that echoed so deeply in my soul, and it resonated within me to a point that um, I wasn't even aware how spent I really was. And so that, at that point, I determined, okay, i got to do something about this. I have got to change my life, change my perspective and what I value. So and, how do uh, you start? How do you get started? Well, first of all, like I say, you got to give yourself permission that rest yeah. is, it's not only okay, it's essential, and it can actually be an act of worship because we were designed with it as a part of our DNA. Yeah. And uh, so what I began to do was look and see how do I order my world because what happens is we would rather be caught doing anything, even poorly than to be caught in the act of resting. Mm -hmm. You know, how much shame do you have if somebody calls while you're in the middle of a nap? 
You know, you, you struggle to answer the phone and, and get your I'm awake voice. Uh, uh, hello? No, I wasn't sleeping. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> because wouldn't that be horrible if somebody thought that you were sleeping? Why, why is that? Why do we think that we, especially women, we right. think we have to do more, we have to have more, we have to be more? Don't you think it's because we continually find our self-worth and our self-esteem in what we do as opposed to who we are? And uh, that goes back to the, you know, the oldest definition of who am I and, and what makes me valuable, what makes me important. And the, the mere fact that I am uh, uh, an image bearer, I am God's, I'm designed in his image, makes me special. And, and I don't have to earn that love that God offers so freely. So I think each day, you know, you go uh, through the day and if you don't have a lot on your to-do list, you don't feel like you've had a, a, a worthwhile day. You know, there's even been times where... At, t at night when I get ready to get in bed, I don't feel like I deserve that night's rest until I've done more. Mm -hmm. And so I'll jump out of bed and I'll get a sponge and I'll clean the sink in the bathroom or I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll clean the toilet or something very banal just to say, oh, look what I've done and check that off. And then I feel like I'm worthy of that rest. And, and that's a really, um, we've really warped our understanding of what's valuable. But it's valuable to give yourself time to pause, to be refreshed, to enter into wholeness. But when you, when you do that, when you find mm -hmm. time to pause, it requires you to look inward. And that's not, that's not a very comfortable thing for a lot of people to do because that's why we stay so busy. That's right. Yeah, we're, we're afraid not comfortable of that with ourselves yet. How do you get to a point of saying, okay, I'm, I've got to be comfortable enough with me to rest? It's a very personal thing. You know, for me, um, I in particular love solitude. And so in quiet is when I find that place. Uh, for some people, it's really different because I know for my husband, um, rest, entering into Sabbath rest, that quiet rest that re restores our soul. Um, for him, it may look like mowing the lawn. For me, that looks like work. Mm -hmm. But for him, he can enter into that, and that restores his soul. So what does it look like to restore my soul? Perhaps you might make a list of those things that you've always wanted to do but never gave yourself permission to do. Perhaps it's wandering through a local museum. Perhaps it's wandering through the local uh, garden center and just taking a look at the flowers that you wish you had time to grow. Perhaps it's planting one plant and nurturing that plant each morning, you know, giving yourself 10 minutes to be in your garden. Uh, there's a variety of so many different things that we haven't given ourselves permission to do because we're just so afraid that, that that makes us lazy or unimportant. I know, when's the last time you spoke to someone and, and said, what are you doing today? And they said, well, you know, I have a really good day plan. I'm going to have some time this afternoon for some quiet meditation and read a book that I've really wanted to read tonight. I'm going to take a hot bath <laughs> with some candles and I don't know, I might go to bed early. The problem is we're afraid to say that because that might make us sound unimportant. Mm -hmm. Well, it starts one of us at a time. When I tell you that that's important to me, then you may have permission to tell someone else that it's important to you, and we begin to change the way that we value life. The principle comes from Sabbath rest. Are you saying that we should get back to the, uh, to the law of Sabbath, or are you saying that we should each find our own Sabbath? I think that's a really good question. And uh, people have talked about that, smarter people than I, for ages, and um, worked that out in the theology of it. The way that I've come to make peace with it is that um, certainly in the Old Testament, we were commanded to give one out of seven days to God because God knew that we would be busy and we wouldn't. Uh, in the New Testament, all the laws fulfilled in Christ, our rest is secured in Jesus. But at the same time, um, while things change in the New Testament, they don't. In a sense, it changes in that we don't owe God one in seven anymore. All of our days belong to Jesus. All of our days belong to him. So what I've tried to incorporate into my life is creating Sabbath moments. And what that looks like is it could be even right now, wherever somebody would be sitting, uh, maybe they're driving in their minivan. Your minivan can become your Sabbath rest if you appropriate that time for quiet. Just take a few deep breaths at the red light and then proceed. That could be a Sabbath moment. It could be that you, know, you institute um, Saturday morning quiet breakfast with the family. Uh, it could be that you all agree that you're going to read one book this year and that on Friday night dinner you're going to discuss that. That could be Sabbath rest for your family. And there's so many creative ways to institute it, and it's not about what we can't do. It's about what we get to do. Yeah. That's, it's not a punitive thing, this Sabbath rest. It's a get-to. So if I decide to take a Sabbath rest, yes, things may go undone. That's right. The children may go without something, the husband without something. How do we get around the guilt? We're going to talk about that Great. when we come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, we're talking about giving women permission to rest. But in that, there is this tremendous weight of guilt that 
I didn't do all that I could have done today, as you were talking about earlier. How do you get around the guilt? Sometimes you just have to power through it. You just have to choose that if something is important enough, then I have to do it and it's an act of obedience and then the feelings will come. Um, the guilt is so, again, we have to retool our minds. It's almost like I wish my mind was a computer that I could reboot because I have so much garbage in there that makes me think I have to do things a certain way. And uh, certainly, first of all, coming to grips with the fact that um, God has modeled it, it's a, a mandate. It's If you have to put it on your to-do list to make you feel better about it, then maybe start there. You know, put rest on your little uh, post-it. Mm -hmm. And then you can check it off and feel better about yourself that it was actually something to accomplish. But I think the guilt will dissolve after we begin to put some of these habits into our life. You know, I, I spoke of the ceasing from and the feasting on. Mm -hmm. When we begin to cease from noise mm -hmm. and feast on silence, we'll see that there's nothing to feel guilty about. When we begin to cease from busyness and feast on leisure, when we begin to cease from anger, and feast on flexibility. Mm -hmm. We begin to see that these things, again, it's not about a punitive setup that God wants to punish us and say, well, you can't do anything, so sit and, you know, it, we have this image of time out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, think about silence. In a sense, when we tell our kids they're going to be punished, they're put by themselves to be quiet. When prisoners are punished, they're put in solitary confinement. Uh, when somebody is angry at you, they give you the silent treatment. So we have this negative image of silence, and we just have to retool it. And the way we retool it is by ceasing from and feasting on. And in that goodness, God will fill us up with the rest and refreshment that our souls are so very thirsty for. So it really becomes by just it comes to us as we begin to establish new habits. And there, there is an opposite because there is also, you really haven't done enough, you know, getting into right. that. Uh -huh. Sometimes you're, it, it may borderline being lazy, you know. Yeah, if I sure. get into the mind frame that I just need to rest today, but there are really things that I need to be doing, responsibilities yeah. that I really need to handle. Where do you find the balance? Well, perhaps, too, <clears throat> certainly um, God is a God of balance, and so we're called to uh, be diligent and be good stewards of our time, but at the same time, we're called to rest. So each person has a personal balance as to how much they need to be told to rest and how much they need to be told to be good stewards. But um, I think that somewhere along the line, perhaps, as we begin to take one step into rest, we'll begin to see that um, rest is also something that has to be perfected. It's an art, too. Mm -hmm. And so there may be some joy in beginning to learn how to do that, how to accomplish rest, uh, being creative and figuring out, how do I reduce this busyness in my life? Mm -hmm. You talked about being barefoot, because I think that in that rest, I think right. the whole purpose of the rest is to get in a place of finding God and resting with God. That's and right. We talk about being barefoot. Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, you know, um, I spoke with a friend of mine, Elsie. She's 94 years old, and she lives in a retirement home, and I've noticed that every time I talk with her, she doesn't tell me about all the things she accomplished or the things she does. She's just such a quiet and, and um, peaceful woman. And I said to her, I said, Elsie, if you had your life to do over, what would you do differently? And she just sat for a minute, and then she got a little bit of a grin, and she said, you know, I would laugh and go barefoot more. And I thought, I'm only 45. There's still time for me. Perhaps this is the secret, this laughing and going barefoot more. And then I thought about in the Old Testament, you know, uh, when Moses was encountering God, was finding his way to God, he stood at the burning bush and God said to him, take your shoes off. It's holy ground. And then I thought about in the beginning, the very first thing that God ever declared holy was Sabbath, mm -hmm. Sabbath rest. So perhaps the secret to entering into this Sabbath rest to encountering God is taking our shoes off and stepping into the holy ground. Anywhere that God is, that is holy, that is declared holy. So perhaps taking our shoes off, going barefoot. Uh, I know that I've made a commitment to only wear shoes I can slip out of easily now. Oh, because perhaps nice. that will help me enter in. Yeah. And so for you, how did you find God in that Sabbath rest? Because you needed to relieve yourself from all of the stress. Where did you find the rest? I began to find peace in letting go. Uh, I retired my tiara as queen of the universe, <laughs> and um, each morning... A lot of morning, us are still wearing I ours. I tell you, well, you know, moment to moment, I have to say, God, okay, I retire. I, re I recognize I'm not, I'm not in charge anymore, and that's probably the, the source behind my busyness, is I do want to be in charge, and um, perhaps we can also look there and see that, you know, um, it's an act of spiritual surrender to rest, to trust that it's okay 
to let go for that period of time that, okay, I'm not in charge of everybody's schedule and everything that has to get done. And again, it's the more we let go, the more we release, the more we discover the goodness that is found there. And, mm -hmm. and it does uh, beget more rest as we get to it. We begin to perfect that art a little bit more. You do a lot of things, and I think you find rest even in your music. Sure. With your husband. We're going to hear some of that when we come back. Oh, great. Great. Stay with us. Okay, we are back with Kim, and you have someone with you, Jim, your husband. My delightful Jim. Oh, yeah. okay. I think... I was a little tired, you know, during yeah, the interview. Yeah, we need some fresh. We need, some, yeah, we need to take fresh. a rest. Is that me? Yeah, that, that's you. Now, listen, I have a question for you. Yes. Does she do nothing too much? <laughs> that's a trick time question. When you she, say, okay, do something. She really does know how to rest well. She's, she is a, a varsity napper. <laughs> and I'm, I'm terrible at it. And I'm, I'm learning by watching her. And He's she's, really itchy. It's not fun to nap together. <laughs> is, is it different for men? You know, you've read her book. I don't know. My grandmother called me itchy all my life when I was growing up as a kid because something is always moving, you know. I'm the guy at the restaurant that's pounding on the table all the time uh -huh. if you want to just, you know, throttle. Yeah, yeah. So how do you find rest together as, mm -hmm. as a team? 25 years of marriage mm -hmm. and you write together, mm -hmm. you're always together. Yeah, oh, that works is for that us. Good thing? Work yeah, for for us. us. Yeah, I think every marriage has its own dynamic and ours... We're better when we're together all the time. But we do have to tell each other to not talk about work from time to time yeah. or to not talk about the church. Jim's a pastor. And, you know, so that's kind of a uh, something on your mind all the time. So right. we do have to make intentional moves to rest that's together. Right. And so you write together the song you're about to do. Yes. Yeah. You wrote it together. That's right. Some Several years ago, actually, yes. Mm -hmm. it's on a, we had a group called Say So, traveled around the country, and this has been on a couple of television shows. And, Dawson's uh, Creek. Dawson's Creek and Party of Five, yeah. several times, actually, on both shows. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah we're happy to bring it. It talks a little bit And about Mom and it. Dad like it. And Mom and Dad that, like that's it. That's what matters. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what matters. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Thanks, Thanks. Deborah. Understand someone I can respect, someone to hold my hand. You know, I just need to connect. It's a small thing that I need, and I could change in the wind when the sky starts to bleed. You know, we all need friends. Stand by me. Stand by you, stand 
by me And I will stand by you Stand by me Imagine a land filled with the spirit of the true South. Elegant, gracious, where people dine above the treetops, dance on water, and play among the stars. Where every moment is extraordinary and dreams become real. For the best value and most convenient way to experience Gaylord Opryland, visit GaylordHotels.com to learn about year-round money-saving vacation packages and special events. Okay, we are talking today about resting with Kim Thomas, and I think we have some questions from the audience. Over here? Yes. Hi. I was thinking, as I was listening to what you were saying, that rest really needs to be divided up into three areas, spiritual, mental, and physical rest. I wonder if you could address that, please. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. She's absolutely brilliant. And then after your own heart. And that's how I broke the book down. You're absolutely right. I, uh, you know, it's so true that at the end of um, a night of rest, maybe you get eight hours, maybe even nine or ten. Ten sounds pretty good to me. Around that. <laughs> when you get that, you wake up in the morning and you don't find that you feel refreshed. Uh, you wonder why. You know, okay, I went to bed early. Why am I not rested? That's because perhaps we might need some emotional rest and physical mm -hmm. rest, you know. Uh, emotional rests, we may need to um, consider uh, the relationships that we're involved in. We may need to consider our attitude. Emotional rests like ceasing from uh, dwelling on the negative and feasting on the positive. That would be good rest for our emotional world. And then yeah. in our physical world, perhaps we need to cease from hurry. Was anybody late to anything yesterday at all? Uh, I don't know about yes. you, but my, my schedule is pretty much, I'm always late for something. Perhaps we need to cease from hurry and feast on slowing down, slow down to the rhythm of life again, yeah. take that deep breath. That would be in our physical world. And then in our spiritual world, perhaps there are seasons where we um, need to cease from fear and feast on trust. I know for me, there's nothing more exhausting than a season of fear, something that sneaks in and grabs me from behind and steals away any possibility I may have at rest. And so I think you're absolutely right. We do have to treat it in a spiritual, physical, and emotional way. Is one any more important than the other? Or do we need to have them in some sort of order? I think it's certainly personal again. Some people, you know, they run themselves harder emotionally or physically. And uh, for me, it's an equal balance. There are definitely ways. And I, I find that I may be treating myself emotionally or spiritually and then forget physically. Or I might uh, forget that spiritually, if I'm not in tune, if I haven't come to remember that God is a trustworthy God, I can I can rest my fears there, then I'm going to um, not be able to even enter into a physical rest or an emotional yeah. rest. So here you have in your book, emotional rest. You know, you say cease from stress, noise, negativity, numbness, and anger. I look here and I think negativity. Sometimes we really don't know that we're being negative but it's all in our minds and, and that really holds us up, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. And it creates, uh, not only does it create um, stress and, and a lack of rest, I guess that's the best way to put it for, our, for ourselves, but then we become a lack of rest for those around us. You know, we can be Sabbath rest for the people around us. And if we're constantly negative, um, I don't want to be around somebody like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that takes away my rest as well. So I want to give you 
an opportunity for Sabbath rest by dwelling on the things that are positive. God has been so incredibly generous with us. There are so many reasons to be grateful and to be positive. And noise, you talked about that earlier, all of the things right. outside of us. But sometimes it's hard to, that silence on the inside is what we really need. How do we tune out everything around us? It is really hard, and I, I broke down noise into a variety of different kinds. There's internal noise, there's external noise, there's intentional noise, there's unintentional noise. Add to that your intentional and unintentional noise, and my world is really noisy. Okay. You know? And you've got, you've got your lawnmowers blowing, you've got your blow dryers blowing, and how do we quiet that? We're learning to love life, even through trials, tribulations, and strife.